So the internet comes into your house, goes into your modem, goes into your router, and then from the router it connects to either your Wi-Fi or it connects to your devices through an ethernet cable, a wired connection. Mm -hmm. And along that way, there can be a lot of bottlenecks. But let's start with the router because it's pretty easy to determine that's it, if that's the issue. So if you haven't done this in a while, I just recommend unplugging and replugging it, basically rebooting the router. And while you're doing that, you might as well do that to the modem too. That can make a big difference right there. So hopefully in a couple minutes, you'll know if you get a better internet connection. The other thing you can do is your router really shouldn't be blocked in your house. So you wanna move it as close to the center of the house as you're able to, and then don't put it on the floor. Try and pick it up, put it somewhere like the top of a bookshelf or something like that, because it's gonna travel farther. And then the third thing, which actually will cost you money is, if you haven't upgraded your router in the past three to five years, it might just be time for a new piece of hardware. You can buy a router for anywhere from 40 to $400. And when I did that a few years back, it made all the difference in my internet connection. All right, good tips on the router, but beyond the router, what are some of the changes that one might want to make? Sure. You, you've probably seen that when you are moving away on a Wi-Fi device from your router, it degrades. You probably, if you ever went outside to take a Zoom call, you may have noticed this. So whenever possible, be, possible, be as close to the router with your wireless device. That's going to make a difference. But if you've got an office or a bedroom that's just not close to where your router is, you might want to invest in a Wi-Fi extender. And these things start at about $20 and it'll just help it, the Wi-Fi connection go that much further. And if you get a really big house, you can look at something called a mesh networking kit. Now these are pricey, but if you get a really big house, maybe that doesn't seem like such a big price after all. And then the other thing that you can do, which I did and it made all the difference, is I got a couple of Cat6 cables, ethernet cables. I connected them from my router into my laptop and I shut off the laptop's Wi-Fi and all of a sudden I had Jetsons quality video on all my Zoom calls. And we're now running multiple Zoom calls using two different Cat6 connectors that connect into the router. That's a great opportunity right there. For folks who are still having some challenges, are yeah. there other things that they can do that might make a difference? Absolutely. So one thing you can do is you can get an ad blocker. Every some of them are free, some of them cost money, but ads are often just running in, in tabs that you're not looking at, in browsers you're not using, you're not paying attention to it, but it's sucking up all that bandwidth. So an ad blocker will help. Uh, many websites do autoplay videos, and that can be a lot of bandwidth that you don't want to use. So you can go into your browser settings and the preferences, shut off autoplay on, on videos, and that'll make a difference. And then there's just some basics like talk to the other people in your house. When are they having a Zoom call? Maybe you don't coordinate, you don't schedule your Zoom call for the same time. And maybe you tell the kids it's time to go get some exercise and play outside when, when it's your turn for an important Zoom call like this one. Wait, now you've gone too far. I think you've gone into the realm <laughs> of the entirely unrealistic. You're probably right.